This is the 3D Viewmaster Horror Adventure The Monsters in the most beautiful goal in the world. Viewmaster Reel 1, Picture 1. When the doorbell clinched through the musty monster mansion, it stilled the whole household for visitors to this home were few and far between. This sad fact puzzled the monsters no end, for they considered th themselves a friendly and attractive family, with the possible exception of Nietzsche Marilyn, who had unfortunately suffered since birth with pink skin and golden hair. Grandpa, little Eddie, Marilyn and Lily all came running to see the caller, but Herman, as head of the house, waved them aside and clomped to the door himself. He was greeted by a pair of tongs holding a pad and pencil. The tongs were attached to an extension device which seemed to disappear into the jungle growth in the yard. A quavering voice from behind a bush said, Special delivery, sign here please. Herman dutifully made his mark, and the tongs then returned with a package. You know, said Herman, as he returned to his family, I think the mailman is becoming friendlier. He used to stand across the street and throw the mail over the wall. Picture 2. Golly, it's a box from Transylvania, Herman announced. Hmm, Lily mused. Last time we got a box from the old country, there was a body in it. Together the monsters walked across the living room to the organ, where Herman held up the box for closer inspection. He heard a suspicious noise coming from inside the package. Lily, it's ticking. They've sent us a bomb. Those bum relatives of yours are trying to blow us to smithereens. It's dangerous. Get a fire extinguisher. Get a pail of water. On th second thought, I'll get the water. With that, Herman handed the package to his wife and hurried through the trap door to the basement. Picture 3. Concern for his family quickly overcame Herman's fear. He rushed into the living room with a bucket of water and dunked the ticking bomb in the bucket. By this time, all the monster family had gathered anxiously around Herman. Twenty minutes passed before Herman was ready to admit. It might be safe now. He lifted a box from the water and listened to it. The ticking is stopped. I'll take it over here by the light before I open it, Herman said. As he held the box to his ear, the ticking started again. Would you like to know what is ticking? Grandpa asked Herman. It's the clock on the wall. Dump old clock, murdered Herman. The raven stuck his head from the ancient timepiece and croaked. Hickory diggory dock. He can tell a bomb from a cuckoo clock. Picture 4. Rather than a bomb, the monsters found, much to their relief, only a soggy, old rolled-up scroll. It contained word from a lawyer advising them that their cousin Wolverine had died again, and, this time, he had left them a fortune of ten thousand dollars. The bequest proved a source of argument. Herman wanted all the money. I'm not going to have you too. Herman and Grandpa repeat your past mistakes by wasting all the money on some silly invention, Lily lectured. I want a little business of my own, one that will make extra income for the family, Herman protested. But after all, it was Lily's cousin. Marilyn suggested a compromise, a 50-50 split, 5,000 for Uncle Herman, 5,000 for Lily. Everyone agreed. This was a fine idea. Well, see who can make the best use of the money, Marilyn chirped. 
Grandpa and Herman decided to use their share to perfect Grandpa's greatest invention, a machine to transmit electric power without wires. I only hope it works better than your invention to send messages through the air without wires, Herman quipped. That failed when all the pigeons died. Lily, on the other hand, was determined to end a professional life in a field for which she had a natural aptitude. I'm going to open a beauty parlor, she boasted. Picture 5. Madame Lily's beauty shop was soon open to the public. It was flowery and fussy, but women go for that sort of thing. Lily and Marilyn arranged a shelf full of jars and urns, filled with beauty preparations handed down generation to generation in the family. Examining one of the jars, Lily purred, This Nile River mud did wonders for Cleopatra's complexion, kept her honeymoon fresh for four different husbands. A Royce Royce pulled up to a stop in front of Lily's shop and from the car stepped Mrs. Harkness, the richest woman in town, and her daughter, Dorothea. They headed directly for the shop door. My first customers, cried Lily. Picture 6. The two women had been intrigued by the quaint appearance of the new beauty shop. Neither, however, was prepared for Lily's dramatic entrance into the main salon. The daughter could barely squeak, Mother, what is that? Miss Harkness soothingly replied, Remember our last beautician wore a beard, but she did a marvelous job, and we must make an impression at the ball of the year. You can take it from me, Lily guaranteed Miss Harkness. When we finish with you, people just won't believe their eyes. Lily's claim was a safe one. Her old world look employed many unorthodox beauty aids. How often can one find a beauty operator who uses toadstool powder and death buoy soap? Picture 7. Grandpa's basement lab was a mess of weird and wonderful contraptions. Grandpa and Herman labored long at the power ray machine, wildly brushing cobwebs from his way. Grandpa ordered, hand me the rotating oscillators, oscillators to his assistant. Herman dutifully handed Grandpa two egg beaters, which the senior scientist attached to the machine. Now hand me the spherical rectifiers, Herman. You mean these two crummy bowling balls? asked Herman as he tossed them over to Grandpa. The bowling balls too became part of the device. And at last it was finished, ready for testing. We'll know in a minute if it works, Grandpa said. If you'll just stand over there against the wall, Herman, with this light bulb in your hand. You master real tool. Picture 8. Herman took the bulb and raised it high over his head. Picking up a dusty book, he cradled it in his hand and struck a silly pose. Look, Grandpa, I'm the Statue of Liberty. And I'm the Tower of Pisa. Cut that out, Herman. Grandpa approached the machine. He threw the switch. Humming sounds echoed through the basement. Sparks flew in all directions and the bowling balls lit up. Grandpa aimed the ray right at Herman. The bulb glowed brightly. The pair were enthusiastic as they awaited the results of their supreme test. They had decided to turn on all the lights in the city by remote control. Once past that, the machine had to be judged a success by any standard. Oh boy! Oh boy, Herman! This is a momentous event. I haven't been so excited since Moon Maid had her baby in Dick Tracy. Picture 9. 
Grandpa hushed Herman and turned on the power. The rain machine vibrated to a start. It hummed. It whirled. The egg beaters pulsated and, around town, the street lights exploded one by one. Finally, the main building at the tower power station went up in a terrific blast. Grandpa's machine, too, blew up. A total wreck. Too suit covered. Munster survived the explosion in the basement. Herman emerged from the litter with an egg beater stuck in his mouth. Picture 10. Most of the jars in the beauty shop had been used in the remodeling job Lily and Marilyn performed on their first customers. Lily inspected their handiwork and pronounced Miss Harkness and Dorothea ready for unveiling. Truly works of the beautician's art. They left their individual beauty booths and took one look at each other. Then, fainted dead away, small wonder, Dorothea looked as though she were the bride of Frankenstein, her hair streaking straight out and her complexion turned to chalk. Miss Harkness had been transformed into the witch in Snow White. To anyone else, they would have been ghastly sights. But Lily, puzzling over the fallen ladies, found that they appeared much better now than when they came in. Picture 11. Once the Harknesses had recovered from their horror-striking fainting spells, they fled Madame Lily's and headed purposefully to the office of their lawyer. Their entry to his office created quite a stir. Lawyer Holmes, though warned by his secretary for a possible shock, jumped up on his desk in sheer terror when first he saw Miss Harkness and her daughter. Help! What in the name of heaven is that? Holmes yelled to his secretary in the next room. Soon his girl Friday had laid his fears to rest. The attorney climbed wearily down from his desk. I get it, he said to Miss Harkness. You're going to a masquerade party. Which one of you is St. George and which is the dragon? The women in a torrent of words explained the reason for their ghoulish appearance. Their lawyer in turn promised that there was sufficient evidence at hand to warrant a lawsuit. In fact, it looked to Mr. Holmes that the culprits deserved to be in jail. Picture 12. That night at the Monsters, Eddie, Marilyn, Lily and Grandpa joined Herman at the dining table. There was very little conversation about the day's happenings in their separate business ventures. Everyone felt too guilty to talk much. The Monsters are not ones, though readily to admit defeat. So it was Lily who first volunteered that she and Marilyn had struck pay dirt with the first two customers at the beauty shop. Marilyn bragged that their customers were going to tell everyone in town about our work. Grandpa, not wishing to give his troubles away, confessed that his experiments had been a blast. Little Eddie sensed that all was not on the up and the up. All the monsters were acting funny, he thought. I'd say, if you were kids, you'd been in trouble at Sunday school. Picture 13. Never Quit has always been a monster motto. Rebuilding work on the demolished energy machine progressed in the dainty confines of the basement lab. Once it was reassembled, a refinement here, an improvement there. Herman and Grandpa choose a more conservative path for any future experiments. Herman, however, urged Grandpa. Can we try the street lights again? That was fun, fun, fun. Grandpa, wistfully figured experience was a good teacher as he moved the machine controls to on. The egg beaters and bowling balls oscillated as before, but with a softer hum, it was in perfect working order. Instead of fooling around, Herman, I'll just ring the telephone down at Lily's by remote control, said Grandpa. Herman chuckled at this original idea. That's neat, oh. Then we'll call up the zoo and ask for Mr. Fox. 
pictures 14. At Mama Lily's, though, the phone didn't ring. It was felt more than heard. Dorothea, do you feel odd? asked Mr. Harkness as she, as she lifted her towel from her eyes. Yes, I do, mother, like a current going in my head. The Harknesses had been advised by their lawyer to return to the beauty shop and Holmes had ridden Lily that, unless you restore my clients to their former beauty, you will be liable to prosecution under the law. You must read three. Picture 15. The wealthy customers call for help. The eerie sensation they felt left them unnerved, and considering their previous experience that was understandable, Lily sped to their sides. Gently removing the towels from the ladies' faces, she found the restoration complete. Their faces were as they had been before the first treatment. Let's take off the dryers, Lily said to Marilyn, and see how their hair came out. Miss Harkness turned to face Dorothea and screamed. Dorothea looked at her mother and shrieked. They were both completely bold. Picture 16. Miss Harkness made straight for Lawyer Holmes' office. Pulling Dorothea after her, Holmes' secretary greeted them with, You do look different than last time. Holmes, too, found his clients different. Distracted by their bold heads, he offered both of the gentlemen cigars. Picture 17. Meanwhile, at the monster residence, Grandpa answered the phone, well hidden in a coffin in the hall. Destroying municipal property, you say? Grandpa repeated the conversation he heard. Thousand dollar fine? Police? Jail? Yeah, well, thanks for calling, officer. Did I hear the word jail? Herman asked the older monster. Why, spending time behind bars could get me thrown out of the PTA. Forget it, Herman, Grandpa soothed. When we perfect our invention, we'll be national heroes, and heroes they don't throw in jail. Picture 18. Lily came home from work, almost in tears. She could hardly read the letter they had received from Holmes. Heltingly, she made her way through the dreary words. On behalf of my clients, we are instigating a lawsuit against you, demanding $10,000. Herman still played the wide-eyed innocent as he told Lily, I hate to say I told you so, but I was against this beauty shop idea from the start. What's happened now? Lily confided. At 3.30, the hair dryers began humming and our customers turned bold. Grandpa saw the whole situation in a flash. Why, Herman, at 3.30 we were trying to ring lilies. In literal terms, we are the Belders and they are the Beldies. The front door knocker stunned the monsters from their silence. It's the police, shouted Herman. Quick! Grandpa, let's hide in the basement. The two men quickly tumbled through the trap door to the lab. Picture 19. Lily answered the door and found, to her surprise, the Harknesses. Lily was astonished. Your hair, it's grown back. She sighed heavily. Miss Harkness assured Lily that her treatment has been responsible. She even offered financial aid to put Lily's overnight hair restorer on the market. Picture 20. Lily was in delirious frame of mind as Miss Harkness and Dorothea left. Come up here at once, she called down to Herman and Grandpa. Her optimism was short-lived, for Herman replied as he stuck his head through the trap door. Good news to you, Lily. We've destroyed the ray machine. Picture 21. Lily broke into tears as she told them. The machine is worth of a fortune. It grows hair overnight. Quicker than you can say, 
Boris Karloff. Grandpa and Herman were back in the lab, tinkering with the power ray machine and faster than Jack Dracula, it was in operating condition. Grandpa aimed the ray gun at Herman's head and waited. No hair grew from his skull. I don't understand it, moaned Grandpa. There's enough juice going through there to grow hair on a bowling ball. He seized the controls and champed them from full on to emergency. Herman gasped. He pointed to the machine. The bowling balls were sprouting hair. Well, Grandpa, I guess if we can find somebody who'll buy hairy bowling balls, we'll still make a fortune. We want to add new videos every day, so please subscribe to our channel. And if you had fun, thumbs up.